Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today's medical tutorial is on what is a pancreatic fistula. Quite frequently, I am asked by my patients to describe in detail the complications from Whipple surgery. Clearly, one of the main complications encountered in pancreatic surgery, especially in the Whipple procedure, is a pancreatic fistula. This medical video is intended as a tutorial for patients seeking information and an explanation in more detail as to what exactly is a pancreatic fistula. As we have seen in previous videos, during the Whipple procedure, the pancreas has to be reconnected to the intestinal tract to establish continuity. This is an example of the remnant of the distal pancreas in a patient who has had a head resection. During the reconstruction in Whipple surgery, a communication or anastomosis or reconnection of the pancreatic remnant has to be established with the intestinal tract, most commonly a loop of jejunum. There are several methods which will be discussed in a future video as to how to perform this connection or reanastomosis. However, all that is necessary to understand pancreatic fistula is that the surgeon creates a communication between the pancreas and the intestinal tract in this location. The manner to which this connection is reestablished will be discussed later and is not that important in describing exactly what a pancreatic fistula is. During Whipple surgery, the majority of surgeons leave at least one drain in proximity to the pancreatic anastomosis. There is controversy as to whether uh, surgeons should be leaving one drain, two drains, or zero drains. Um, some studies have advocated the use of no drains. Because the majority of pancreatic surgeons, however, use drains, um, I will include this in this video. A drain is a suction device, which is usually in this day and age closed suction devices, that allow fluids or secretions to be drained to the outside. Most of these drains have a bulb on the end. A pancreatic fistula, in essence, is just failure of the healing process in the suturing of the pancreas to the intestinal tract. Or uh, another way of saying it is it's a failure of healing and creation of a communication from one epithelial surface to another. So how do we, how as pancreatic surgeons do we determine whether a patient has a pancreatic fistula? Now it is harder, if, if a surgeon, for example, does not use closed suction drains, this is a harder task to determine. Um, that is the reason most surgeons at least use one drain temporarily to help determine whether there is adequate healing of the pancreatic anastomosis or pancreatic ana uh, connection. So now let's get to some basics definitions of a pancreatic fistula. Um, up until recently, there has not been a uniform consensus as to what exactly a pancreatic fistula entails from a measurement standpoint. We all know esoterically that a pancreatic fistula is some failure of communication between the pancreas and the small intestine. But how, what does that mean clinically and how do we measure, measure it and then how do we grade it if necessary? So basically, pancreatic fistulas 
can be measured by volume of pancreatic rich fluid. So how do we know if, if the fluid that is leaving the pancreas to go into the drains is, is pancreatic rich? Um, it is quite easy to send this, the fluid in the drain for an amylase. An, a, an amylase is a simple test that we use in the serum to determine if a patient has pancreatitis. Well, that that same assay can be can be performed on the fluid to determine if this is an amylase rich fluid. And it is generally agreed upon that if the amylase in the pancreatic effluent or JP is three times the serum, then that is the definition of uh, amylase rich. So that's that's one level of probable consensus among pancreatic surgeons. Other areas of controversy are the volume of fluid that comes out and the day and duration, day slash duration. Up until the international consensus agreement, um, some institutions used 50 mLs of amylase rich fluid as a definition of pancreatic fistula. The day post-operatively that this occurs, however, has varied from anywhere from measuring it at three days to, you know, eight days to even as high as ten days. Um, so, for example, if a patient has greater than 50 cc's of amylase-rich fluid at three days, but it stops prior to 10 days, is that a, is that does that patient have a pancreatic fistula? By one institution, that the patient may have a pancreatic fistula because it occurred at day three. Other institutions, however, do not, other institutions may, however, not begin to measure it until day 10. Um, so if this, if this particular patient who has a amylase-rich fluid on day 3 stops at day 9 and is, the, is not measured at day 10, this institution may be calling it a pancreatic fistula, whereas this institution who uses 10 may not. So that led to the importance of coming up with an international uh, consensus among pancreatic surgeons. Okay, so the international consensus on POPF or post-op pancreatic fistula was established in the year 2005. The, the purpose of this um, consensus obviously was to generate some type of uniformity when speaking and using the term pancreatic fistula, which not only confuses patients, and that's why I'm doing this video, this video is intended for patients, uh, but also obviously confused surgeons when publishing um, their data. What was agreed upon uh, initially was that any output from an operatively placed drain or a subsequently placed percutaneous drain by radiology, for example, of any measurable vo volume on or after post-operative post day three with an amylase that is three t uh, rich, which that, sorry, with contents that is amylase rich three times out of the serum. So um, any volume, so what's any volume, doesn't have to be 30 cc's, 50 cc's, uh, on post-operative day three and above with three times amylase. So that is the basis of the consensus from the standpoint of volume and, and duration and day. So the parameters, however, of post-op pancreatic fistula 
are now relatively standard with degrees uh, with with those measurements. Uh, serum, I mean, sorry, amylase in the drain, effluent, what day did it happen, and, and what volume. So there's no there's can be no con confusion that you know 30 cc's may constitute uh, a fistula versus 50 cc's. Um, you have to remember that surgeons want to have low pancreatic fistulas rates, so they'll uh, there's always a, an, you know an opportunity to want to use different criteria. So now there is there's no fighting over that. But what was more important, but more importantly, what came out of the uh, consensus conference was a way to grade these fistulas, and they, they um, came up with a system to grade them into A, you know, B, and C. And what I what I'll do is just generally go over these um, th this grading system. So with with grade A fistulas, the majority of patients are doing clinically well. No further treatment is necessary. Um, there are no collections by CAT scan. There's no evidence of an infection. There is no need for antibiotics. Um, there is no evidence of drainage after three weeks, and there is no need for readmission or reoperation. So these are essentially transient, and that's how they were defined. Now B fistulas are intermediate to a, uh, between A and C, obviously, and the patients clinically are often doing well. Um, there is usually persistence past three weeks of amylase-rich drainage, unlike B, the uh, A category. There is no need for reoperation. Um, there are some signs of infections, of an infection, with patients usually being placed on antibiotics. There is no overwhelming infection or septic complications, however. So. There may be infection, but there's no sepsis. So C is clearly the most severe, where patients actually do appear ill. Um, there is clearly persistent drainage after three weeks. Um, there is a need for reoperation or reintervention, reoperation. Reoper There is a potential for death. There is signs of sepsis. Um, these patients may either need surgery to drain infection or control the fistula better than the drains placed at the time of surgery. Um, and what's also important is that, is that there is a chance of death and that most deaths from Whipple surgery or pancreatic surgery occur in patients with um, type C fistulas and most of the mortality is in the three to five percent range. So this grading system allows us to further identify patients and, fur and further grade patients as to the degree of their pancreatic fistula. So I hope this helps explain um, what a pancreatic fistula is, um, why we are concerned about it, and how we measure it. Uh, I thank you for your time uh, and, for, and for your attention during this uh, important medical tutorial on what is a pancreatic fistula.